Make Share Grow podcast. I'm artist Julie Marriott, and I created this podcast to share behind the scenes stories of art, craft, and the creative process. Hey guys, this week I'm chatting with painter Samantha Merritt of Samantha Luis Designs. Sam creates vibrant abstract paintings. Some are full of dancing marks, playful colors, and chunky textures. Others are more subtle and subdued with moody washes and glimmers of gold. Sam lives and paints here in San Diego, California, and she also shares her love for her creative process through local painting workshops. I love to be able to move artist friendships off Instagram and into real life, so I'm so happy I've gotten to get to know Sam in person. We've met for some coffee dates and art chat, and I just love her passion and energy for her work and for being a part of the artistic community in our city. As we start our chat here, you'll definitely want to look up Sam's work so you can get a better picture of what we're talking about. You can find her on Instagram at Samantha Louise Designs. It's spelled S A M. A-N-T-H-A-L-O-U-I-S-E, and then the word designs. I know you're going to love hearing all about Sam's art and process, so let's go ahead and dive into our conversation. Hey, Sam. Welcome to the show. I'm so excited to have you. Hi, Julie. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, I uh, was just trying to remember, we met at West Elm, I remember, was it sometime last year, you were doing a pop-up, and I came in to have a meeting, and that is how we met, and I think I had seen... Yeah, I had seen your work on Instagram some and was like so excited. I think I maybe even like knew you were going to be there for when I did my meeting and I was like, yes, I'm going <laughs> to talk to this lady because <laughs> I love your abstract painting so much. They're so beautiful. And so I'm excited to talk about your art and your process and hear more of the behind the scenes of that. Oh, you are so sweet. Well, I remember when you popped in and you were just this little, you know, ball of joy and you just hopped up to the table and I remember having the best conversation with you. And it was like one of those kind of lulls, you know, um, yes. and I was like, Oh, you know, you just came up and you had this big old smile and we just, yeah, connected. And it was so fun to just, you know, meet another artist. And, um, uh, yeah. And then I loved, you know, stalking your work after that. I remember like looking at your Instagram after you left and I was like, Ooh, Ooh, this is really fun. And you know, you were all casual, like, Oh yeah, I just paint and I'm here for my meeting. And I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, eight scrolls deep all of a sudden. But, um, yeah. So well, what's cool yeah. is I love getting to know San Diego artists, which I haven't really, I haven't gotten into like knowing as many local people. So that it's, makes me so excited because we're both here in San Diego right. and have had a couple get togethers to kind of swap information and advice and just hear about each other's art and business and stuff. So that is also super cool. Yes. It is very nice to have friends that are doing the same things that, you know, you can bounce ideas off of and just help each other out. It's really nice to know that we're not all alone and being crazy in our studios by ourselves. (laughs) You know, we're all kind of working through the same issues and we're, you know, um, kind of trying to figure out how to be a part of the same types of projects. And, um, yeah, so it's just great to be able to share all of that information and help each other out. And I think also as, you know, small business owners, we get just very in our heads a lot and it kind of sometimes just takes like a little small conversation with a friend to be like, Oh wait, why didn't I think of that? Or, you know, it gets you out of that kind of um, kind of that zone. Yeah, so for sure. Yeah, it's been, it's been so great. Yeah, I feel like I always get energized after I talk to other artists. So this is going to be great. So, um, absolutely. Yeah. So do you mind sharing, um, what your creative story is and kind of how you have come to start making the art that you are doing today? Sure. Sure. And I'm going to try and keep it as together and as brief as I can, because when I go down the path of this story, it tends to get a little bit wordy. So um, I'm going to try and keep it, you know, keep it as condensed as I can. Um, But this was never really my plan. Um, I always wanted to be an artist. That was, you know, something that when I was a kid, you know, every birthday, Christmas, you know, I was always asking for art supplies. I was always like the crafty kid. And I think somewhere along the way, it just, you know, got to, you know, you grow up and um, you get to a point where you start thinking about what you're doing. And I think that that just kind of dwindled because it was like, oh, that's that's not realistic. You can't do that. Like, what, what are you actually going to do? Like, you can do artsy things, but, you know, what are you going to do for a career? Um, 
and yeah, so I think that that got kind of lost for a little while and pushed to the side. And, um, I've kind of lived these different chapters and, um, done a lot of different things in my adult life that have led me to be a painter living in Southern California, which is so strange. (laughs) And I never thought that this would happen, but, um, Uh, the thing that led me back to creativity was, um, when I moved to San Diego almost four years ago, actually next week, um, which is crazy. Um, I moved here. I know it's so weird. It's so bizarre. Um, but I moved here for a different job. I was working in uh, media sales and after I moved here, I, um, just had met so many creative and inspiring people who were just doing what they loved and kind of making it work. And that's what really kind of piqued my interest. And I was like, Ooh, okay, what are, what is everyone else doing? Like, and it was just, it was a different mentality, you know, coming from the East coast. And, um, you know, it was very common for people to kind of stack a couple jobs and, you know, have their passion and then maybe, you know, like bartend one night a week or work at a coffee shop or something like that. And that wasn't what I was used to. And so that was just kind of interesting that so many people were living their dreams and just making it work. And I just was really excited by that. And I, found myself being less excited at my corporate job. So, um, I kind of sat down one night and made a list of all the things that I loved and I was passionate about and made a list of things I thought that I was good at. And, um, at the end of that decided that I was going to try being a wedding planner. (laughs) Um, cause I had, Oh wow. Yeah. So since I had some event experience and, um, yeah. And so that, uh, I did that for a little while, but then as I started being, um, in that creative realm of the wedding world, um, I found myself more drawn to um, the actual design and installations and the actual art of all of these weddings rather than the logistics or the planning. So that's kind of where things started to change for me. Um, And I started just being aware of abstract art. I was kind of one of those snobby people that thought that abstract art was kind of easy. (laughs) And like, I never really liked it before, which is so weird because that's like (laughs) my entire world. (laughs) So, um, but I don't know, something changed in me and I just started noticing it. And um, I just started wanting to mess around with it. And I um, had been doing calligraphy for my clients when I was a wedding planner and doing um, a lot of watercolor calligraphy too. So I was messing with brush lettering and, um, yeah, that kind of got me back into paint. And then the abstract art thing was floating around in my head and I kind of just started doing it and, um, you know, was like, okay, I I think I can, I think I can figure this out. And, um, I remember picking up my first like little, I think it was like an eight by eight or 10 by 10 little canvas and being like, okay, I know exactly what it's going to look like. And I got these colors and I'm just going to do this real quick. And it's going to be so easy, (laughs) you know, and then you go through and you do it and you're like, oh, that is not, that's not at all what I thought that was supposed to look like. Abstract is <laughs> you know? so hard. And, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, well, it was supposed to be this effortless thing. And I thought if I could just, you know, like, I, I don't know, get into a groove and do like a dash of paint here, it would just look really effortless and cool. And no, that was not the case. At all. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, after that, I was kind of hooked though. I, you know, was excited about what I thought I could, I could make. And I thought I could maybe do better next time. And, you know, so I kind of just became like an art nerd and started hanging out at, um, artists and craftsmen a lot in Hillcrest. And, um, they taught me a lot of what I know. Um, I remember I went in there one day when I first started painting and I was mixing like oil and acrylics and (laughs) one of the guys, Frankie there was like, um, that's not really a thing. And what what are you trying to do exactly? (laughs) You know, so guiding me in the right direction. Um, but yeah, I just, I was so just in love with, the, you know, happy accidents and finding new materials and different things that I could mix together. And when I first started painting, um, I basically like tarped my entire apartment (laughs) and like, it was just like a Mm -hmm. madhouse, you know, and I was just using spatulas and like, there was just, you know, canvases everywhere and just, you know, I was constantly stepping in paint and they're just, yeah. And I would go on like four day benders when (laughs) no one would hear from me and, you know, until a friend would show up and be like, um, are you alive and have you eaten? And, um, yeah. And that was all while I was still wedding planning and that was my, um, my side passion, you know, that was what I was doing, you know, to fulfill myself on the side. And, um, but then people started liking what I was doing and, um, started wanting to buy work, which was very weird. And so, um, once that started, um, I was kind of, yeah, hooked on that process too, of taking people's ideas and, inspirations and colors that they were into or projects they were doing at their home and really bringing that vision to life and creating this really cool piece of art that made sense for that. And that I put so much heart and soul into and, um, yeah. So then it just kind of has snowballed from there. And, um, yeah, I cleaned my last wedding, let's see, September two years ago. So I've been full-time painting ever since then. So it's kind of, it's kind of 
it's kind of nuts. I don't know. It's very strange. <laughs> that is awesome. So did you kind of phase, so it sounds like you phase slowly out of the doing the wedding and then into art, into your painting more full time. Were you incorporating the paintings into weddings at all or was it completely separate? I was. And so for a while I kind of wanted to make that be my thing and I wanted to make that work. But then I realized that that was an entire um, large undertaking you know, and just the wedding industry in general. I mean, that's a, that's a tough, that's a tough grind, you know, in terms of running your business and, you know, how many hours you're putting in and how many things you have to miss on the weekends, you know, with loved ones and things like that. Um, but I did love, I mean, it was really cool getting to do, I did a lot of really large scale backdrops and, um, some really cool pieces that were great for styling, um, within different like vignettes at the weddings that I did and, um, that I was designing and putting together. Um, so it was cool to see that kind of hybrid, um, come together, you know, hybrid, uh, two things that I love come together. Um, but, but yeah, yeah, but then it just, I was, you know, the interiors and, you know, the commissions and just figuring out, um, what that path was going to be, you know, as an artist that was kind of just tugging at my heartstrings so hard that I couldn't really ignore it, you know? So as much as I loved the weddings and it was really great and, um, a lot of fun and I got to be a part of a lot of really cool couples, big days. Um, it was, yeah, it was just, it was time to kind of explore a different passion and figure out, figure out what that looks like. And I'm still figuring that out. So <laughs> well, that's super exciting. Do you make your work in a, like a studio at your home or outside your home or what's your space like? So I am in my home studio in Ocean Beach. Um, previously, I was in North Park, and I was in a shared space with a really good friend of mine, Melissa George. Um, she has a leather goods company called Walter and George. Um, so that was a really, really fun space to be in, and that was a really cool because um, that was still when I was wedding planning too. So that was kind of um, I had a lot of wedding things that were happening in there, and then I was painting, and then she was doing her leather, and um, that was really fun. But in that space, it got to a point where I was having a high volume of projects that I was turning over. So, um, there were some restrictions on the building and I, you know, couldn't be there as late as I wanted to. So I started working out of, um, my home studio a little over a year ago. So, um, it's been great. It's been really nice, um, being able to paint whenever I want. Cause I'm kind of a weirdo and a night owl <laughs> and like to get inspired at weird times. And, um, you know, so it's just nice to have everything in one place. And, um, I have a couple different areas outside that I can work to. So it's nice that I can have, um, I've got kind of three different working areas. So I have my studio, that's our third bedroom in the front of the house and then an area outside and then an area in the front yard too. So lots of drying surfaces and, um, thankful my boyfriend's very patient with me because there's just paint everywhere all the time. <laughs> so <laughs> nice. it's just a lot of things happening, but it's so fun. And it's really nice to be able to, um, you know, infuse, just a lot more of who I am as a person, you know, this is where I live and this is, you know, I'm sharing, um, you know, special moments with my friends and my family here at my home. And I'm also creating this art that is such an embodiment of who I am as a person too. So it's, it's kind of a cool, a cool chapter that I'm in right now that I get to kind of have both of those things happening in one space. So that's awesome. So yeah. what are your, what are some of your favorite, um, art materials? I know you use acrylics, but then you mix in a bunch of different, um, mediums and things like that. So tell me all about your favorite materials and maybe some of the tools and things that you like to use. Sure. So I love mixing like anything and everything. And I like mixing things in different parts of, um, I have kind of like eight different versions of my process. And so like, I like to mix different materials at different steps in different parts of my process, if that makes any sense. So, um, I, there's, you know, just a lot of different things that can happen with each of these. So I use a lot of like ink and, um, water soluble wax pastels and watercolor, um, and oil pastels, and then a ton of different kinds of textured paste. Um, and then I'll use different binding agents like a matte medium, um, and I'll actually sometimes mix in like sand from the beach or um, other like coarse ground type things if I'm trying to get like a specific texture. Um, but I like to just play and I like, I really do love those, you know, um, like happy accidents when I find like a material that maybe isn't technically supposed to go with another one, but the way that the chemicals are reacting together or, you know, pushing each other apart is, you know, creates some kind of really cool um composition on the canvas. So I just like to explore and experiment, but, um, I do love my palette knives and I love good chunky texture. And, um, but yeah, I just like playing with all of those things. And, um, I kind of like flowing between that 
um, kind of layering texture and that layering style and the chunkiness, but also having that fluid watercolor um, kind of loose um, and a little more um, kind of minimal um, yeah. Yeah, look to it. <laughs> yeah, I feel like some of your pieces definitely are way more f- are way more atmospheric and fluid looking. And then the, yeah. some other ones are way more like mark making driven, I guess <laughs> that's a, yeah, a way yeah. of saying it. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's so cool. Do you have different kinds of palette knives you use or do you just have one? I do. I have a whole bunch of them. So in my studio, there's like baskets, big old baskets of paint. And then there's like just huge Tupperwares of different textures. And then, yeah, there's a whole another big tray of just all different kinds of tools. And I do use a lot of like non-traditional things, like I was saying before, like spatulas and um, different kind of um, things like household things that um, you find that just have like maybe a cool edge or, you know, some kind of cool texture that you might be able to run through um, the paint. So yeah, I have a bunch of different sizes. Um, When I do, I do um, large scale abstract murals too. And so when I do those, it's really fun uh, because to use like the really big guys, you know, like the ones that are like the size of my face. So yes. those are really exciting. <laughs> those make me feel very, very cool. And I think they're like actually cement troughs or something like that. I think I got them at Home Depot, but like that feels very cool to use those. <laughs> oh, that's so awesome. I love the idea of using like non-traditional art tools because yes. my stuff is very, I'm very brush focus. I don't think I use anything that's not brushes. And so I love hearing all the weird things that other artists use. No, and I'm always so fascinated by everything you do. And every time I'm like always zooming in on all of your, you know, everything you're posting, because I'm like, gosh, that detail is so lovely. And that line is so clean, you know, and that color is so bright or, you know. (laughs) Yeah, I think we have, I, I find in myself, and I'm sure it's the same with other artists, like we're super intensely interested about other people's creative processes because it can be so similar and that there are like some really big differences. So that's what I wanted to ask you about next. So what is, I know you kind of have different ways you work, but what would be a way that you would start a piece and then how would you kind of work through it? So it kind of depends on, you know, obviously, like you said, you know, which style I'm going to go for. Um, but typically the way I start pieces is without a lot of thought. And I think that's probably like the opposite way of a lot of, that a lot of artists work, but, um, I like my first marks to be kind of the most freeing thing that I'm doing. And, um, I'm kind of really letting loose and letting myself go. Um, I don't typically map out my paintings because my process is so abstract and just based on how I'm feeling and my emotions and, you know, what I'm using for inspiration and, um, you know, just what's happening that day. So, um, yeah, it's never, it's never really like a hard plan, but, um, it usually starts with a lot of erratic movements, usually like some ink splatters or like just a big swipe of texture or, um, you know, I'll do a couple layers of, um, different types of paints, um, just to kind of build up that texture. Um, usually I'm a layer junkie. So in any given painting, there's probably going to be, you know, anywhere from eight to 20 layers of, something on there. Um, and I like to isolate a lot of my layers too. So I'll, um, just clear coat them to make sure that, you know, whatever's happening on the previous layer stays to the next one and, you know, kind of let some fun things peek through. So, um, yeah, I know that's not, (laughs) I'm like trailing off and, you know, (laughs) going into further down the process, but, um, yeah, usually it starts with a whole bunch of crazy motions. (laughs) Oh, nice. So do you have to like let things dry in between? Is that kind of how you work? I do. So I have at any given time, usually like 10 pieces that are going um, just because I am like that. I like to hop around from different things and um, it kills me to ever waste paint also. So I like to be able to have a lot of things that I can um, work on in case I do mix up way too much of one color. Um, And yeah, that's kind of just how my brain works. So and it works for, yeah, the amount of drying time that I need in between those. But it is good that I have a lot of surface areas and sunshine. So, um, I can kind of, you know, play musical paintings and, you know, swap paintings and, uh, outside, inside, outside, you know, and, um, while I'm, you know, clear coating them and all of those things. So yeah, lots of drying time. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Lots of patience. Oh, that's so fascinating. <laughs> How cool. Do you like working big or small better? Do you have a preference? Oh, I love big. I love, love, love working big. And, but at the same time, I, um, like really love tiny things. And I really do get excited about the little minis. Like I, I get really excited when I see yours too, because they're so cute and ours look really cute together. Like just the little four by four. They're so cute. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) So, so cute. Um, but I love to work big, you know, so, um, the bigger, the better for me. Um, 
I did a piece recently that is almost like an 80 by 90. And that was the biggest I've ever done um, besides mural work. Um, but that was on wow. canvas. And yeah, it's just really, um, really freeing to be able to get that big. And I like how laborious it is too. Like I like, you know, using those big tools and, you know, smacking a bunch of texture on there and just really getting into it and the physicality of it. You know, I really enjoy that part of the big pieces and, you know, flipping them around and um, having them on an easel, having them flat and just moving them around. Um, yeah. So I, I love working big and I love creating pieces that create, you know, a really cool, bold statement that makes an impact, you know, so like a big piece that goes over your bed or in a dining room or just that big cool piece that's over your you know couch or in a cool space in your house um just something that makes an impact but yeah I love big bold bright and just energy filled kind of funky pieces <laughs> nice yeah I would think that bigger you could get more gestural with it right because you mm-hmm. have so much more space to like move your arm <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah you can definitely you can definitely get really weird and I find that I kind of I let go a little bit more when I'm bigger um when I get a little bit smaller I tend to get in my head a little bit more just because I have a little bit less space to work with. So I start to kind of like look and examine each like sample piece of the painting and um, just kind of get a little more granular than I do with my process when I'm working big. So um, yeah, big is definitely, yeah, big is more freeing. And I feel like I can get to that kind of flow state that every artist is kind of seeking. You know, you just want to get in that space where you're just hanging out above your body, painting this cool thing that, you know, all of a sudden is happening. And I feel like I can, I can do that a lot easier when I'm working big. Nice. What is um, like one of your favorite parts of your process? Like where are you just having the most fun and thinking the least about it? Oh gosh, it's all so fun. Um, <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> yeah. I, um, I, don't, I mean, I really, I really do love the beginning. I mean, those, like I said before, you know, those big freeing strokes, you know, the big marks that you're making where you're just not thinking about anything and it's just so, you know, freeing. Um, and then, yeah, like, you know, just getting to that space where it doesn't feel like you're doing anything at all. And you're just kind of watching yourself create this beautiful painting. Um, but then also I really, really love presenting a client with a beautiful finished piece that they are so excited about, like being able to see the looks on their faces, um, is just, it's so cool. And being able to bring an entire vision together, you know, especially when you have, like, I've had some clients that have, you know, been looking for a house for X number of years and they were, you know, dealing with negotiations for this long of the time. And then they had to find an interior designer for this long. So it's like, you know, the art is usually kind of like their icing. It's like their last piece of their puzzle or, you know, mm-hmm. they're kind of like thing, they're like treat yourself kind of thing, you know? So to be able to bring that and um, just really make someone so happy and give them just a piece of, I mean, they're little pieces of my soul, you know, it's just, it's, it's what I love. It's what I eat, sleep and breathe. And so to be able to do that and give that to somebody and have that, you know, be in their home and make them, so happy and be a part of their every day too. everything that, um, you know, they're going through throughout their lives and their worlds where they're existing. I mean, not to get too mushy, but that's pretty cool. (laughs) So (laughs) yeah, for sure. What is like, what's a hard, what's the hardest part for you during your creative process? Oh, um, knowing when to stop. I am definitely a maximalist and, um, I do enjoy minimalism. And I'm trying to like play with that a lot more, but I always feel like I could keep going and there could always be more and more and more. Um, and there's sometimes when I have like, you know, started a piece and I make my first couple strokes and I'm like, man, that is beautiful. Like that could just be as is. And I could just do a couple layers of other things in other places, you know, but it's, it's hard. It's hard to practice that restraint and, um, yeah, knowing when things are finished and, um, when not to mess with them. But at the same time, I will also say, that I really love, um, my pieces that have been like 10 failed paintings before, you know, so the, mm, yes. is that, yeah, the unplanned texture build up, you know, the, like I have a series right now that I was working on that was going to be like a really bright, funky, cool. I did some spray painting things for the underpaintings. And then I, um, yeah, I was going to do this chunky texture and it's just not panning out. So I'm going to try an inky thing. And I just painted like over them this morning and they're looking pretty cool. And so, I'm really excited to see what they turn into. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I think, that, yeah, the hardest part is just, yeah, that, that control. And, um, but then also at the same time, you know, being patient with yourself, you know, you have to just, you know, not 
beat yourself up all the time throughout your process. And it's kind of a weird shift too, when you go from making art as your passion to making art as your income, you know, cause it's like your passion is tied to a dollar amount now and it's tied to your livelihood. So that's kind of a weird shift also um, to go through. Yeah. Do you have a hard time like separating, thinking about like, will this sell when you're in the studio? Sometimes it's hard for that not to creep into your head. I think that I've built up a good wall. I think within the past maybe couple months of just totally separating that. Like now I'm actively like, I'm going to use all this color because I feel like it, you know, and not, Mm -hmm. you know, not trying to limit myself, but it does, you know, I mean, we are artists, but we are also business owners, you know, so you're thinking, you know, about the things at all times and you can't really help it. So, um, as much as I can try and shut off that noise and create that disconnect between, you know, between the two of them and not let it affect my process and not let it affect the way that I'm, um, you know, practicing my art because then that just takes away from it. So it's always a juggle, you know, it's kind of, uh, you know, yeah, I feel like it's a mind game sometimes. Yes, <laughs> so, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So so you said you didn't go to art school. This was kind of you you found yourself getting into it later right. later after your other careers. So what um do you find like that you have any like restrictions that you I don't know, come up in your mind when you're making art, like, oh, this isn't like following the rules of what, you know, art should do or things like that. Do you have anything like that come up or do you just feel like totally comfortable since you didn't have that, that background? I feel it a little bit. Um, cause I think I do miss the days when I was just so, so green and like mixing that, you know, oil and acrylic together because, and just not knowing anything and just, cause there's some really old work that I look at wow, like I didn't even know. And like, I didn't even know that I was doing this cool thing. Um, you know, but, um, in terms of rules, yeah, I, I try not to really follow any of them. And I think it has been kind of a big asset for me to not have a lot of those like predispositions that other artists have with a big, heavy art education background. Um, I did have a lot of early, um, art education. So I went to a really, really small liberal arts, uh, private school in Atlanta called the Galloway school. And so I had a very heavy arts influence in elementary, middle and high school. So I went there like my whole life. And so it's funny cause I did, I had this very, like, I remember learning about Picasso when I was in like second grade from, you know, my favorite teacher, Miss G. And so I had this very, <laughs> you know, very artsy upbringing, but then it was like, once I got to college, it was like, nah, you can't do that. And, um, yeah, but, um, but I think that, yeah, I try to not, not follow, not follow any rules and, um, just try and be intuitive about letting myself kind of guide my process and not think about too many things. But I think the hardest thing, um, in terms of like, you know, the rules and, um, thinking about all of those things is like, just, yeah, not letting the noise get to you, you know, and not letting, um, I feel like the feedback is hard. So I think like feedback is kind of equivalent to like the art rules for me. Like, you know, people are like, Oh, Mm. you you should do more, like you should really do more blush pieces, you know, or like, Oh, you should, you know what really sell? Like you should really do more blue things or like, you should really do. And I'm like, Oh man, should I? And I'm like, should I be doing, you know, and it kind of gets in your head and I'm like, well, wait, what do I actually want to do? Like actually forget all of that. What do I want to paint? (laughs) You know? So that is such a good point. Cause like, even though social media and I've told, I've definitely been feeling this lately, like social media, you, you, it's so helpful for getting your work out there. But then like people give great feedback, but then when you start hearing like a bunch of people saying the same thing over and over and over, you're like, well, well, should I do it? Right. Right. Because then there's that like business voice in the back of your head. It's like, wait, that's market research. And that's what they're telling me they want. Like I should listen to that. Right. You know? So, right. So how do you filter that? I am sometimes not well. Um, (laughs) sometimes, um, it's just, you know, staying true to who you are at your core. I mean, I just always, um, have to go back to, if I'm trying to be anybody else, I'm just not going to do a good job because that's not who I am. And, you know, if I, if I'm not in alignment with who I am and what I'm trying to do, then, um, what am I really doing? You know, this is the whole point of me being, um, you know, an artist and being able to paint and decide what I want to be creating, you know? So, um, when I get away from that, that's kind of when things get, shaky and rocky, but it is, I mean, it is difficult. It's hard to 
um, you know, kind of put your blinders on and just keep your head down. Um, and there is a lot of noise. I mean, you have opinions from, I'm sure you get it too, like your friends, your family, and of course they're trying to help, you know, but sometimes they don't realize, um, you know, what your goals are or what you're trying to do, or, you know, they think you're, they're doing you a favor by like, you know, taking one of your paintings and, you know, maybe not paying you for it or something like that. You know, it's just weird, you know? So like just <laughs> those things you're like, mm, what? That's not helpful, but I appreciate where you're coming from. <laughs> do you find that you get more non-understanding feedback because you do abstract? Um, sometimes. Or do you think abstract is so, cause I kind of go back and forth. Like, I feel like they're, is so much more contemporary abstract work just out in the world right now. And it's so much more geared towards like, like how we all want to make work that will be beautiful in spaces and stuff. I don't know. I feel like it's more palatable, but then it's also harder, just harder for people to understand. Right. Well, and a lot of people too, haven't really um, bought original art most of the times, so, you know, there's a lot of, I feel like um, education that we have to do as artists, like this is how the process works and this is, you know, kind of the expectations. And this is, you know, we have to kind of do, you know, this is what things cost. A lot of times people don't know. Um, and, um, it's cool that we, you know, have that opportunity that we get to educate people too. Um, but, but yeah, it is, it is hard, you know, when, um, when you are getting a lot of that, just, yeah, the noise. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So you were saying it's totally feeds perfectly into the next question (laughs) I had was about your creative voice. So you were saying, you know, all the noise, um, and you have to deal with that by coming back to like, why am I making this in the first place? So what do you, would you say, um, has helped you kind of hone what your voice is in your painting practice? I think the thing that's helped me the most has just been staying really close to my goals, um, and staying really close to what I'm actually trying to do. Um, And the closer I stay to that, you know, I kind of just do a little check in with myself. I'm like, okay, what am I, what am I putting out there? Is that aligning with, you know, the person that I'm trying to be and the artist I'm trying to be and the work that I'm trying to put out there and the community that I'm trying to cultivate, you know, is this in line, you know, so I'm always checking to make sure that, you know, I have all of those goals and core values, you know, at the forefront of my mind when I'm, you know, um, yeah, just using my creative voice because we are so lucky, you know, that we have these massive platforms. I mean, we have a lot of different ways that you and I can reach people and we can make a difference in people's lives. And there's a lot of things that are going on in our country right now that um, are things that need to be talked about and things that, you know, um, we need to be um, sharing, you know, and we need to be talking to each other. And um, I think that, you know, we just have such a cool opportunity as artists to, share who we are as people, really make people feel, you know, less alone and create something really beautiful and bring people together and, you know, give a voice to the voiceless. So I think that, um, for me, my creative voice is just, you know, staying true to all of that and just, you know, who I am as a person and, um, um, yeah, just making sure that I keep those, keep those goals real, real close to my chest because a lot of people will try and get you away from them and, you know, you just got to fight for them. So, Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when I've noticed that you've been coming out like with series um, of work, have you always done that? And has that kind of helped you hone, you know, an aesthetic or find, you know, what, what you're drawn to more or tell me a little bit about that. Well, I, I kind of struggled with the concept of series, especially when I first started, because I feel like I just had so many ideas that I, you know, I couldn't even keep, you know, my head focused enough to kind of execute like that one idea. It was like, oh, I've got this one painting and that could be five paintings, but let me just move on to this other painting because this painting could be really cool too. And, you know, (laughs) so so it's so funny because you look at like my, like my first uh, portfolio photo shoot that I did in like, yeah, it was like 2016. And, um, it's just funny because it's just all over the map. I mean, it's just funny, quirky little one-off pieces and I love all of them and it's so fun to look back at them. But, um, yeah, getting more into the cohesive bodies of work has been really fun. And, um, I think before I was just creating and not thinking about, I mean, of course I'm thinking about why I'm creating the entire time while I'm creating, but I wasn't really thinking about what am I saying specifically with this painting? You know, what am I actually trying to convey? Because I I don't think you immediately know what your creative voice is. I mean, it takes a little while to figure out, you know, who you are and it takes a while to step into your own as a person and, 
as artists too, we're constantly having to be very vulnerable and put ourselves out there. And so that can be kind of a slippery slope. And um, so you don't just, you know, overnight get to this really strong place where you can, um, yeah, just know exactly what you're supposed to be saying and what you're supposed to be doing all the time. Um, But I have been um, really wanting to say a lot more with my paintings. Um, So the most recent series that I did is called It's Going to Be Okay. And it was a series on coping and self-love and vulnerability that I did through my residency with um, 1805 Gallery in Little Italy. Um, So that was really, really special and really powerful to be able to put a body of work out there that has been on my heart and on my mind for such a long time and do it in a really scary but authentic way. Um, So um, I really like, I really like series and I think I'm going to keep pushing towards that. So um, commissions have been kind of my bread and butter and what I do a lot of. And like I said, I absolutely love it. But um, for 2019, I'm going to focus on just doing series. So I'm only taking commissions for the rest of this year. And then next year is going to be just time that I can dedicate to really um, exploring and developing different topics and different bodies of work um, in different series. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I find that interesting, that push and pull between commissions and personal work too. And I find it's funny, I find um, that commissions give me a lot of ideas because yes. they it's somebody else's input is coming in there. Mm-hmm. And I love collaboration. If we're both on the same sort of aesthetic page and they're not like trying to get me to make something that's not my work if they're like if they're coming to me for me which is great um then it's like so energizing to get new ideas and stuff but then it's sort of like on to the next painting you know and then so I've been like trying to plan out this year like when do I block off some time just to like make a series of like to think, you know, for all the yes. ideas that I've been saving up versus like lots of one-off yes commissions, right. like you were saying. So yeah, <laughs> right. I feel the I feel the struggle too. <laughs> right, but you do have to like plan. I mean, you have to like you know schedule that time. You have to put that time aside for you, you know, or you're not going to end up doing it. And um, but yeah, it is. It's it's hard that push and pull between because I do love them both. You know, I love them both in different ways. Like the commissions are very fulfilling in one way, and then the series are really fulfilling in another. So. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a fun little song and dance we play. <laughs> Are your, um, clients like involved in the process a lot? Yes. And so I kind of leave it up to them at what level they want to be involved. So I have clients that'll come to my studio, um, cause I have a decent amount of work here at any given time. So, um, and a lot of different examples of, um, like the specific styles that I do too. And I have all my swatch books and all my color palettes that I use and, um, we go through sizing and like ratios and things like that. Um, but then I also do in-home consultations too. So, um, I'll go to my client's house and, you know, they might have like their designer there too. They might have, you know, some fabric swatches for me or a mood board design plan, something like that. Um, but initially I like a lot of client involvement, you know, I like to get all the information I can and I like, you know, more, more information is better for me, you know? So, some clients are like, Oh, I don't want to inhibit your creativity. You know, I don't want to suffocate you with this. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, no, 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 it's great. Give me all of it. You know, like I, I will pluck and I will choose and I will edit as I see fit, but you know, give me all of it and I'll kind of sift through it and see what comes out of that, you know? Um, but, but yeah, I, I like to tailor the process to how my clients, you know, want to be dealt with, because I have had some clients that are like, you know what, I like your work and I like the blue things you do and just make me that and let me know when it's done. And so, um, and that's really nice. So I, yeah, it's kind of, kind of a broad spectrum of how people like to handle things, but I always like to tailor it to how the client wants to, um, wants to facilitate that relationship. That's awesome. Yeah. So what are some of the things that, like keep you coming back and painting and interested? Like what are, what are sort of the, the little, I don't know, directions or I know, I know it's such an open question. (laughs) I I remember Um, when I was reading through these, I was like, Oh gosh, this is going to be such a word vomit answer from me. (laughs) (laughs) So just go ahead. (laughs) So sorry. Um, I, I don't know. It's just, there's so many, there's endless possibilities. So there's just an, there's so many different things that you can use and there's so much that is left up to chance, especially with abstract. So that's what keeps me coming back. It's just that I never know really what it's going to look like. It's kind of like the unknown, you know, and I know that I can tweak just this tiny little part in my process and that it'll give me an entirely new outcome, you know, and 
I work a lot at night too. So like a really fun part for me is I, you know, work like a crazy person sometimes till like three or four in the morning. And then when I wake up, I'm like, Ooh, that's what that looks like. Like that's how that dried, <laughs> you know? And it's just, it's like, <laughs> nice. a, it's like a fun science experiment, you know? So it's like, just, um, yeah, it's kind of that itch to, it, to explore and, um, just, you know, kind of play. I think that, um, art for me, and I don't know how you, I mean, I'm sure you feel the same way. It's just so therapeutic and just very, you know, cathartic to be able to just, um, yeah, create. And so, um, I like to just stay in that space of constantly creating and keeping those, you know, juices flowing and, um, just making more and playing more and, um, yeah, kind of tapping into, um, our inner children. Cause I think that that's important. So, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. I'm super curious. So where do you get color inspiration? Everywhere. <laughs> um, I, I love like very organic kind of earth tone colors. I'm very inspired by nature. I love to be outside, love to stay active, go camping, um, hiking, all that kind of stuff. Um, but I also just love really bold, bright, crazy colors. So like I, always have kind of like a column next to my big wall that I paint on in my studio that has like kind of my mood board inspiration. And I'm always clipping stuff out of like Vogue and like high fashion, like really bright, bold stuff. Um, like Gucci did a campaign not too long ago that was just so over the top and crazy and just like really strange imagery. So I get really inspired by, um, yeah, just like funky art direction and, um, just really bold, bright colors that make you feel energized. Um, so yeah, it can be like a very bright wall on a building. Um, I love architecture. Um, I love mid-century palettes. Um, that's something I'm really drawn to too. So, um, I kind of get it from all over, but I really like just kind of experimenting and I like, um, surprising myself with kind of those unexpected color palettes, you know, pairing like a weird cobalt with like a periwinkle and then throw in a, you know, hot pink in, or I don't know, you know, just kind of those <laughs> things that yeah. wouldn't normally make sense, you know, on paper, you're like, Oh, that all of those things together sound like a hot mess. But when you put it on a canvas and you're like, Oh, that's what you mean. You know? So, um, yeah, kind of all, kind of all over. Nice. Do you, do you find yourself getting more, um, inspiration from like physical things like magazines or things like that or online or are you all over the place? I like physical things. I like being able to touch and like cut out things. And I also am a thrifting and vintage junkie. So I get a lot of inspiration just going in like picking and treasure finding um, and just like feeling old things. I know it sounds kind of strange, but like, <laughs> you know, like weird old keys, like industrial things. And I don't know, just, yeah, old textiles and I love rugs and, um, yeah, weird, like pendant lamps, just, you know, strange things. So I, I'm a big, like touch, feel sensory kind of person. Um, although yeah, the internet is lovely and that there's a lot of scrolling that I do for inspiration as well, but yeah, I like, I'm, I'm, I'm I like, I like touching things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the keys and the pendants remind me of how you're using gold in yes. your paintings. Is that a new development? So I have always kind of done gold. Um, that's always kind of been like my little, um, like my jewelry. That's kind of been like the last thing that I do. And it's always like a pop of gold, you know, just a little, kind of a little something, something, because it's just nice to have that, um, extra little metallic. And I feel like it pairs a lot. It pairs well with, you know, a lot of the palettes that, um, I paint with too. So, um, and it's just kind of that expected nice little touch and, um, yeah, people just get really excited about gold. It's just gold goes with everything and it's so shiny and nice and it just, yeah, it looks lovely. And so, uh, yeah, I use a really thick, um, a heavy body, uh, heavy body, uh, acrylic paint from golden. And that's my favorite one, but, um, I really like the way that it plays with, uh, the buildup of texture on the canvas too. So that's kind of my, it's kind of my sweet spot when I get like a good chunky texture. And then I just do like a very little, like swift little, you know, just a little brush stroke. And then it's just like a little, it's just like that nice little feathering that you're just like, Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> that reminds me, I forgot to ask you what, um, what kind of brands, paint brands and stuff do you like the best? Uh, I use, so I kind of have my, and I'm sure you're the same way. You have like your, you know, kind of groups of colors from each that you love. Yeah, like I, have, yeah. you know, I have like my Liquitex, like my portrait pink is my favorite from Liquitex. And then, you know, I have like, um, a lot of golden that I use, um, golden and Liquitex are kind of my main two. Um, but then there also are some, um, kind of, uh, cheaper materials that I find that I am drawn to a little bit more, especially for like pastes, like the modeling paste, um, 
sometimes mm. are a little bit just too chunky and a little bit too much. So I find that I mix, I'll mix like, um, you know, one part of, uh, the super chunky stuff with like three parts of the runnier kind of cheaper stuff. So I'm always kind of playing and mixing all of my materials together, but I would say, yeah, Liquitex and Golden are kind of my two favorites. Um, uh, but yeah. Nice. And then on my palette. Yeah. Mix, I find, I love definitely like certain brands for certain things. And yes. it's so funny because I have this one like Liquitex basics, which is like the yes. cheapest thing in the so art good. store. <laughs> But I have this orange and I don't, I can't, it, it, when you mix it with white, it turns into like this corally pinkish, it's the most unusual orange. And I cannot find another one that has that same pigment right. in it. And so like, if you actually look at like that, the name of the pigment, that's like all numbers and letters <laughs> that they use it. It's like, I can't find it on any of the other ones. So it's like, I got to still keep buying yeah. this one, even though I kind of like hide it in the bottom of my basket. Cause I'm like half ashamed right. that I'm using like <laughs> the dollar. <laughs> no, but I, I, I love knowledge. the basics and <laughs> basics is actually the Liquitex basics. The, um, white is my absolute favorite. That is my, I use the most of the Liquitex basics white, especially for mixing. And yeah. Yeah. Cause you can get some good transparency and yeah. stuff with it too. If you're doing layering and yeah, stuff. And it also just has this nice balance of like butter and chunk. It's like not too much. I find that like, mm. like Blick has a really good white that is just super chunky and I'll use if I have like a crazy textured painting, but it's kind of more like a glue. It's like a you know, it's like, you know what I'm talking about? Yes. yes. I think I got a tub yes. of it one time and yes. I never got it again. <laughs> yeah. It's so funny. Um, yeah. My, um, my friend Josh, um, uh, medium studio, you, I think I've met him before, but yeah, he, we always have this argument. He's like, um, that's my favorite white. I'm like, your white sucks. My white is so much better. <laughs> he's like, he's like, no, the blue white is better. I'm like, mm, no, absolutely not. The basics is better. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, but it's funny how we all, you know, gravitate towards, different different things but but yeah I do find that it's not always the nicest of the nice that I love and there has been like there's been some um watercolor colors that I've tried where you know you buy the super super high end you know like the two little two milliliter tube that's like you know eighteen dollars or whatever um you know and then you're like oh I don't actually I actually like my three dollar one better you know I actually like my really cheap thing that I bought you know um so it's funny how you like just kind of play with different things and find your sweet spot but yeah then you hide your you hide the you guys at the bottom of your spot. Yeah. <laughs> if anybody actually knows. Yeah, if any, if any, no, and they totally don't. It's just a weird, you know, our weird artist brain thing that we're doing. <laughs> I think what like made me paranoid one time is that like somebody came and saw my basket of paints one time and they were like, oh, you use Liquitex? I totally thought you would use Golden. And I was like, <laughs> made me ashamed but maybe I, I will not be ashamed anymore <laughs> no do not be ashamed no there is no shame in any of that whatever works for you works for you and yeah yeah well, that's so the truth and when I have people ask like what you know in uh, mostly it, it strikes me as beginners you know they'll see your photo and then ask um like oh what is that type of brush you're using what is this what is that and it's almost like I'll tell them, but then it's uh, sometimes it's like, well, I'm not really using that brush because it's the best one. It's just sort of the one I have right. around, <laughs> you know? And so it's like, don't necessarily go off of that. <laughs> like, and also just like edit the information I'm giving you as you see fit. Cause like, I'm not sure if any of this is actually, you know, like, I don't know if I should be telling you this, you know? <laughs> yeah. I think experimenting is the biggest thing is like, you just have to kind of try and see you know, what works for you in your process. And then you kind of get comfortable. <laughs> I think right. I've gotten to the point where I'm comfortable and I need to like yeah. throw in a couple new materials <laughs> to keep things fresh. <laughs> I know. I know. I'm still dying for you and I to have a painting date because I feel like we can make some really, really cool stuff together. Ooh, that would be some fun. Kind of Let's fun, do it. Some kind of fun, funky collaboration. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> All right. We'll talk about that one. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Cool. Okay. So I want to move into our final three questions. So the first cool. one is, um, what is a, a recent struggle in your creative practice that you've had and then share a recent triumph? Sure. Um, so I was recently working on a commission for a client who I love. Um, but this specific palette was a little bit out of my comfort zone. Um, it is not my normal. Um, it was peacock blue and sea foam and royal blue and rose gold and silver, and then a lot of chunk and layers and texture. Um, so really, really Whoa. beautiful inspo, right? Just really yeah. cool. Um, but the kicker is that she did not want any indigo at all. No indigo. 
Um, and indigo is like half of my heart, I think. So it, that's always like, Oh, oh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but it really, oh, yeah, it, you're yeah. Too. I mean, it really, it really challenged and stretched me, but I knew, I knew that it was going to. So I just, I was really patient and I allowed myself plenty of time. Um, and that's something that, um, I've been trying to, uh, be better at just with my project management. And I've been so proud of myself the past couple months of just having really good, um, you know, um, expectations and deadlines and, you know, getting into a good groove with all of them. Um, but yeah, but I just, I, you know, was just patient with myself and I just remembered that, you know, who the client that I was painting for, you know, she's a really, really fun, bubbly person. She's actually best friends with another client of mine. And so she's a really special person to me and, um, her and her husband are so sweet and they're just a really fun, loving couple. They have this really cute, um, apartment in, uh, Acadia. And yeah, so I just kind of was like, okay, you know, this is out of your comfort zone. It's a little different, but just bring it back and remember what you're doing and who you're doing it for and why you're, you know, what you're trying to make here. And, um, yeah, so, and it turned out to be so, so pretty and so unexpected. And just once I got into it, it just flowed super effortlessly, which was great. And, um, but it was definitely, you know, something that I was anxious about and I was a little, a little nervous and, um, yeah. And when it's, you know, a big deal, a big deal piece, you know, for any client, of course, um, it's, it's always that a little bit of, you know, Ooh, but, um, yeah, the nerves. But yeah, it was, yes, exactly. But she was so excited and like seeing her and her husband's face and it was just the best feeling ever. And, um, yeah, and it definitely, like you were saying before, it, it stoked my creativity, um, for some other things because the peacock blue floored me. It was so fun to work with and I loved it. Um, and yeah, the rose gold and, um, the silvery metallic together was really cool too. So it was, yeah, it's been kind of like got those in the back of my head for something else, maybe a mermaid collection. I don't know. It's just, it's, it's back Ooh. there. I don't know. So, um, yeah. So, um, and then a recent triumph kind of along the lines of just trying to manage all of my projects more. It's just from, it's not from an artist's perspective, it's from the business side uh, perspective, but just, um, delegating more things and, um, realizing that I don't need to be doing every single step of every single thing within my business. Um, and even though I know how to, it does not mean that I should be doing that. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. so it has been really nice just getting some new resources recently. Um, I just found a local resource actually that will come to my house and pick up all of my paintings and ship them for me. And their insurance policy is better than, um, what I had been using before. So it's, yes, it is like, <laughs> that is like such a game changer. So like just to be able to simplify, you know, my systems and how I'm, you know, managing my daily, weekly, monthly kind of like in and out of my art business. Um, I've just been spending a lot of time kind of, um, reevaluating all of that and figuring out how I can just be painting and creating more and, kind of outsource, um, some of those other things and also support other, you know, local small businesses. There's plenty of amazing small business owners in San Diego that do very specific things that you can hire them for. And you should, because, you know, we just want to be painting. (laughs) And so you can find people that do the things that you need support with, you know, um, it just feels good to be able to get that off your plate. Also support another small business owner and, um, yeah, just get closer to what you are trying to do. So that has felt really good to just, um, feel confident in that and, um, just, yeah, get to get to more of a clear head now that I don't have so many kind of admin tasks on my plate and things that I have to worry about. So that has been a really, really exciting thing. <laughs> yes, yes. Cause I, in one of my other, um, interviews, we talked about how there's so much back end that people don't oh realize gosh, yes. is there when you're making art. And I didn't realize when <laughs> I started doing it as a business and it's like, I think I calculated recently and I was spending like 75% of my time on like the emails and the research and the figuring out the shipping and the packaging and all that stuff. And I'm like, well, how much time do I actually have right. for painting? So yes, we have to like be super intentional about that, yes. that ratio. Yes. It, can, it can fluctuate and shift and like spill over pretty quick. So, you know, yeah, you got, all got to keep it in check. Oh yeah. That's awesome. That's yay. Kudos <laughs> yay. to you. <laughs> I'll send you that resource too. <laughs> cool. Yeah. So I'm curious if you could own a piece of art or, um, or whatnot from a contemporary artist or maker, what would you choose or who would you choose? Oh my gosh. It's such a long laundry list. You can give um, me a you're couple. obviously in there. <laughs> 
you are obviously in there. Oh, um, sweet. <laughs> sorry. Um, yes, of course. I love, love, love your work. And I love, um, you know, the women holding the bouquets. Those are some of my favorite. Just, um, yeah, everything you do is so fun and happy and um, inspiring. So, yeah, I love your work, obviously. Oh, <laughs> um, and Josh Phyllis, the other artist that I mentioned, he's a medium studio on Instagram. Um, he is another abstract painter here in Ocean Beach and a dear friend of mine. Um, and I am obsessed with his work. Um, he does really, really amazing, flowy, but impactful, cool stuff. But he has just such a crazy, um, just wide spectrum of work that he does. Like he does very, I don't even know if you, I need to show you some of this stuff, but he does very crazy, like just very like detailed palette knife work that is just so insane. And I have no idea how it happens, but yeah, he is just <laughs> a maniac. Um, so I absolutely love him. Um, Heather Day is an artist in San Francisco who I also love. Um, Baven Roxanne is in Charleston. She's an abstract painter too. Um, Oh gosh, there's so many. Um, Taylor Cox, Britt Bass, Bryn Casey. Um, those are all artists in Atlanta. Um, Marsha Robinson is a really cool one. Um, she is strange dirt on Instagram. She is in Boulder. She has a really cool botanical, um, kind of whimsical, um, linear drawings and like big tapestries and things like that. And she just recently did a series, um, of, uh, drawings and paintings in big like ornate chunky vintage frames that are just oh, oh so wow. beautiful and it's just such an interesting um yeah it's just an interesting contrast between the kind of like detailed line work that's very like you know um very specific but then with her like feminine shapes that she uses with the ornate frame it's just yeah it's crazy but I just yeah I wish I could buy all the art all the time from all of these people because it's just it's so cool because we are in just a really exciting time that there are so many amazing like so many amazing contemporary artists and makers that are doing what you and I are doing. And, um, it's just, it's really cool that there's that community there and that we can all, um, support each other and, um, yeah, invest in each other's work. Yeah. And about and all these yeah. And it's so, ex <laughs> it's so accessible yeah. too, because you can just like pop onto their website right. and buy something, which makes it really hard. Right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to at least like do my, my sort of thing is like, at least one thing a year I would love to buy yes, an original piece absolutely year. absolutely awesome. yeah there's so many so many cool artists that we can support and yeah like you said it's so easy to just you know pop on there real quick so um yeah it's our job to educate people that there's you know lots of artists that they can go to and they don't have to just you know go to home goods or whatever <laughs> tj maxx and get some random thing to put on their wall yeah, you know you yeah. can actually support local artists right here in your community so um yeah yeah that's fantastic well, thank you, Sam. This has been so much fun. So would you, um, do you have anything that you're currently working on or any projects coming up that you'd like to share about? Uh, my exhibit at um, Porta Vista Hotel from my work with 1805 Gallery, It's Going to Be Okay, is still on view until April 9th. Um, so that is still on view and you can make an appointment um, either directly through me or through the gallery director, Lauren Siri. Um, so that will still be there until April 9th. Um, but yeah, and then other than that, I'm just, I'm going to be releasing, um, um, a collection of one-offs, actually. It's funny that we were talking about that. I have kind of, yeah, a random collection of some one-off pieces that I've been working on recently. So, um, yeah, I'll be doing an online release hopefully this weekend, um, if not next week. But, um, yeah, so some online pieces to look out for. Um, workshops are coming down the pipeline, too, so that'll be really exciting. Um, still developing that um, workbook, finishing that up. And, um, yeah, that'll be great to be able to um, start to teach people um, I know that everyone loves taking your workshops and I'm definitely want to come take one of yours as well. So, um, yeah. Well, that's super exciting. We talked about workshops mm -hmm. before and it's like so cool to hear how, you know, how that's been developing for you. So people will have to take, uh, keep a lookout for that. As it's coming yes, along. yes, yes. I would love it. I would love Yay. it. Well, thank you, Sam. This has been so awesome hearing about your process and all your tools and, the inspiration and everything. And I get, I'm just so inspired by how excited you are about the creative process and how you're just going at it <laughs> headlong. So <laughs> it's been great talking to you about it. Well, it has been awesome talking to you and you have been such a good friend and, you know, partner and teammate in this art thing. And I'm just so thankful for you and your friendship. So, um, yeah, this has been great talking to you. Thank you again, Sam, for sharing with us today. Samantha's website and all of the art materials, resources, and artists we mentioned in the episode are linked in the show notes at juliemarriottart.com slash podcast. 
Thanks so much for listening today, you guys. I would really appreciate it if you would take just a minute to leave a rating on iTunes and a review. Um, Really getting more ratings and reviews will help the podcast show up better in search. And so I would love if you would just take a couple seconds to do that. It's really easy if you do that within the app. Just scroll down to the bottom of my podcast sort of feed and you can find the big rating and review button. (laughs) And also, if you know another artist or creative person, would you share the show with them? Um, I would love to be able to reach more artists with um, the information that we're sharing here and all the artist interviews. And I hope that I can inspire as many people as possible with what we're sharing. So um, if you would shoot them an email or share through the app or even just tag them on one of my podcast posts on Instagram, I would love that. So until next time, guys, I hope you'll continue in your own unique way to make, share, and grow. listening to Make Share Grow. You can keep up with the podcast and my artwork on my website, juliemarriottart.com and on Instagram at juliemarriottart.com.